A newborn teenager whose story captured national attention is back home tonight. 17-year-old Paige Winter spent weeks in the hospital after she was bitten by a shark last month. The teen was attacked at Fort Macon State Park on June 2nd. Doctors amputated part of her leg to save her life. She also suffered serious injuries to her hands. The city of Havelock Fire Rescue Department shared these pictures on their Facebook account tonight from a welcome home gathering for Paige. Paige's father is a member of that team. The family thanked doctors and nurses at Vida Medical Center in Greenville for taking excellent care of their daughter. Tomorrow, our nation celebrates the 4th of July holiday, and as with most holidays, there's an uptick in traffic on the roads. Nine on your side's Aaron Dean talked to the State Highway Patrol for tips to keep you safe on the roads this holiday. He's live in Greenville with more. Aaron. Trooper Brad Taylor with the North Carolina State Highway Patrol says that he's seen a lot of people make driving mistakes during the busy holiday season. When it comes to traveling on the road during the 4th of July holiday, it's important that you pay close attention to what you're doing. Being a holiday travel, a holiday weekend, um, people are going to parties and they make the mistake of getting behind the wheel after um, consuming a lot of alcohol. Brad Taylor is a master trooper for the North Carolina State Highway Patrol and says he's seen plenty of people making careless mistakes during the 4th of July. People aren't allowing enough time for the travel time and with the high traffic volume, um, you're going to come into delays. You know, there's going to be a lot of traffic on the road and people get in a rush. And one way to avoid rushing, he says, is to make a travel plan. Go ahead and have your plan in place and know where you're going, your destination. Um, allow plenty of travel time. And if you have a travel plan in place, Trooper Taylor says that could lower your chances of speeding. Don't get in a rush. If you get in a rush, you're more likely to speed. If you, if you speed, you're more likely to be involved in a vehicle crash. But speeding isn't the only thing to be mindful of. Distractions could be happening inside and outside of your car. If you have a lot of people in the vehicle with you, <clears throat> your family members or friends, um, eliminate some of those distractions, loud music and um, cell phones. Cell phones are a big distraction for us now. There's consequences for everything. So well, if you don't wear your seatbelt, you can be you decided that. Get a citation for that. If you're speeding, you can be charged for speeding. Um, if you're driving in a manner that's reckless, along with the speed, you can be charged with careless and reckless driving. As far as the driving while impaired, if you want point eight or more, you can be charged with driving while impaired, and you can be arrested and uh, lose your license. Trooper tell trooper trooper tells me that there are going to be increased patrolling and also even more checkpoints in place. This is all an effort to keep people safe and to remind them to be smart drivers. In Greenville, Aaron Dean, now on your side. Aaron, thanks. Final preparations are happening in the city of Greenville ahead of the 4th of July. Today, crews set up safe zone fences and tents at the town common. Independence Day events will include activities for kids, families, and a fireworks show. 10,000 people are expected to attend. The 4th of July celebration is a great day to be at Town Common. We've got live music, um, our food vendors, bounce houses, face painting, and all the games and things that go with the 4th. A chance for families to come picnic and hang out at Town Common and listen to music. And then, of course, the feature of the day, the fireworks at 915. The celebration kicks off at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Live entertainment starts at 3.30 and the fireworks show at 9.15. You're encouraged to arrive early to secure a spot. And in Beaufort County, the city of Washington also gearing up for its big 4th of July celebration tomorrow. As many as 3,000 people are expected to make their way out to the historic waterfront. That event kicks off tomorrow afternoon at Festival Park. There will be live music, a wide variety of local food that the whole family can enjoy. My favorite part about July 4th in Washington is being on the beautiful Pamlico River and seeing all of my friends and neighbors, everybody that you, maybe you haven't seen in a while, coming together, celebrating this beautiful town, celebrating our beautiful country, and it's a lot of fun. And to wrap up the evening, of course, there will be a fireworks show along the waterfront overlooking the Pamlico. That will start around 9 o'clock. In Duplin County, residents are encouraged to celebrate without shooting fireworks. Conditions are extremely dry and hot. The Duplin County Fire Marshal issued a ban on open burning for all unincorporated areas. The ban includes fireworks. It will remain in effect until further notice. Right now, presidential contenders are on the campaign trail, making their case for 2020. In two weeks, President Donald Trump is holding a campaign rally here in Greenville. WNCT's Madeline Ashley takes a look at the upcoming visit and the president's re-election campaign. 
Last night, President Donald Trump did announce that he will be making a stop in Greenville, North Carolina for his 2020 campaign rally. With the race for the 2020 election heating up, President Trump's campaign is heading to the east. The campaign rally for the president will be held at ECU's Menjis Coliseum. The Coliseum comfortably seats 8,000. The last time President Trump visited Greenville was during his 2016 presidential campaign. Brock Letchworth, a Greenville public information officer, welcomes the idea of public and media attention that the president's visit will bring. It provides a, a, a nice little boost during a, what's typically a slow time for the city from both an economic and exposure standpoint. With a sitting president, you're always going to have a pretty large uh, media contingent that will be following uh, him or her. In the past, Greenville has hosted presidents like Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. While we don't have all the information yet, we do know that President Trump will be at ECU's Menjis Coliseum right here July 17th at 7 p.m. For more information on this story, please go to WNCT.com and click Online Originals. In Greenville, Madeline Ashley, 9 on your side.